Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Monday over here in the Atlantic. Our long parade of weak invests and weak storms is finally coming to an end here. This is Tropical Storm Gert. We got two names out of this train, Franklin and Gert, both moving out in this general direction, recurving out to sea here. Gert's a nice little system, a nice little warm core structure here and some outflow to the north passing just east of Bermuda which is right here and they're only going to get a thunderstorm or two from this and here's the radar structure out of Bermuda nice moderate tropical storm look here basically half a core but it looks nice definitely warm core definitely deserves the name 60 mile per hour tropical storm moving out to sea here and this will be no threat to anybody on its way out this is the last in a long line of invest this was 92L it's getting absorbed into Gertz area here and will be no threat for development by itself and what's this down here. What could this be? Well, this is former Invest 93L. That looked like nothing out here and was declared dead and discontinued by the NHC. But remember what I said a couple of days ago that once it got west of 50 west and tried to get into this warmer water here, we may hear some more from it as it approaches the Caribbean and when it gets through towards the Western Caribbean as well. And look what it's doing now. We actually have some thunderstorm activity with this. And uh, this is interesting to see. And it makes perfect sense, really. Because if you look at what's going on right now, we have this Atlantic high pressure system out here, and we have the trade winds coming strongly out of the east here. But notice where Gert is. Gert's moving north, which implies that the edge of the ridge is around here, where Gert is moving out. And you can see that there's kind of a barrier here, where the winds, you know, the cloud field changes between this side and this side, and the winds are kind of moving northward here. So this implies that the trade winds are racing out of the east here and then stopping near the islands, or not fully stopping, but breaking, putting on the brakes, slowing down. And when you have strong winds that have to suddenly slow down, it means that air is piling up. And when the air is piling up at the surface, that means it has nowhere to go but rise upward, and thus that air condensates into these thunderstorms that we're seeing here. And this is a long way from developing, but you can see the concern that I had that despite the models dropping this, it could still be a feature that would deserve watching as it comes to the Caribbean. Now, it is still going to have to deal with the same kind of thing that Emily had to deal with when she entered the Caribbean, is that this area south of the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico is very hard to develop in if the system is not already developed east of the Antilles Islands. So if it gets in here, it's going to have issues because the trade winds are strong and we reverse the process where air is now speeding up as it moves farther west, which induces sinking motion, which means that the air in here is very dry, and uh, the sounding out of San Juan shows this dryness. This is the temperature with height, and this is the dew point with height. When these two lines are separated by a good margin, as they are here, it means that the atmosphere is very dry, and it is very dry in the low to mid levels here. And this is going to be an issue for this as it comes west, but once it gets into the western Caribbean, again, we have air piling up more than more than usual and thus this could be something that tries to do something in here. The models still don't like it but this is still something that we should probably watch just in case something happens here. You can see the convection going off with it and we may have to keep an eye on it. This is the GFS forecasted upward motion green colors indicating rising air orange and brown sinking air and uh, right now the MJO is mainly focusing the upward motion in the eastern Pacific which we can see easily because there's a monsoonal low right here which makes lots of sense. And as we go out in time, the GFS brings the MJO fully. It's coming into Octant 2 now, which favors upward motion out here, which is why we see this at day 5. And it's going to be staying in Octants 1 and 2 for the next couple of weeks based on the models. And thus we see a lot of green showing up at the, in the Atlantic for the next couple of weeks, right during the peak of the season here at the end of August, which is not a great time to see all this upward motion because it could support, it could support some storms here. And over the next few days, this batch of green is shifting into the Caribbean more so as this storm moves off to the west-northwest and thus the Caribbean may be more ripe for potential support for something like 93L or maybe even another separate monsoonal system after 93L gets out of the way in 5 to 10 days. We may have to watch for that as well. Another thing we're looking for is this strong wave coming off of the African coast right now, getting dry air wrapped into it, but very well defined in here. This is going to be coming westward. And the models are all coming into agreement on this, at least trying 
to pull off some mischief as it nears the islands getting across the central Atlantic. And just as an example, this is the European from last night, day 10, showing a storm north of the Antilles. A couple of runs before this, it had a hurricane here. The run after that, it dropped it. But if the European is at least showing periodic development, something it hasn't shown a whole lot this year, then it's something to watch because again we've had seven name storms four of them were very small like GERT came from mainly non-tropical processes frontal systems cold core upper lows things like that the only two real deep tropical systems we had were Don and Emily and Arlene and the European hasn't been so excited about the tropics this year because of all these little things. It doesn't like developing those. It didn't like developing Dawn because she was weak. It didn't like Emily because she was weak. And so if the European is actually going to show something here, it's been pretty good at calling out the systems that would remain weak this season. So if it shows development, it might be something to watch down the road. So we'll keep an eye on that. Still way far out here, just coming off of Africa, but it is showing that the Cape Verde season is starting to ramp up. And we are in mid-August, the period of August 15th, which is today through October 15th, is the historically most active period of the Atlantic hurricane season. So we're just now getting into the thick of things, folks. And we will have to continue to watch to see what may be thrown our way here. We've been lucky so far, but that may not last through the rest of the season. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.